All right, here we go. So 3.1, Calculus 30, we're gonna take a look at some questions from 3.1 and possibly 3.2 here. But, uh, so we're, we're talking about applications of derivatives, uh, specifically um, the connection between derivatives and velocity functions and acceleration functions. So we know that uh, if we're given a position time graph, then the slope of the tangent line at a certain point is the instantaneous velocity at that point. And so we know this, and so this question says, the position functions give s in meters as a function of time t in seconds. It's frozen. Oh, it's frozen? Well, that's no good. There we go. Find the velocity as a function of time. So we are looking for the expression of velocity, okay? Velocity would be s prime, okay? The position uh, function prime. And the velocity is after two and four seconds, okay? So we simply, here, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, I'm going to type this out over here, one, okay, find derivative, and that will be the velocity function, and then we're going to input um, t values to find the velocities, okay? Does that make sense? Is that, is that pretty boring for you? You're yawning already? Okay. It's very, uh, it, uh, no, 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 it's very interesting. Okay, <laughs> thank you, that, that's very convincing, yes, okay. Okay, <clears throat> all right, so let's take a look at A. This is like, I'm sorry, this is so easy. I, I apologize for asking you to do stuff that's just way beneath you. Okay, is that all right? Okay, you don't mind? So S prime is going to be our velocity function. Now, could, could you do this? Yeah, you could do this. Velocity function with respect to time. You could totally do that. But how we do that is finding the derivative of the position function wow. that we're given, right? So this is going to be 0 plus 12, or the velocity function is going to be just 12. So what that means is that, that the whole time the velocity is 12. It's constant velocity. There is no value of t that affects this velocity. It's always 12. That makes sense because this is a straight line, right? Look at that. It's a straight line function. So we've got a really um, stiff, a steep curve and it's, it's, it starts from here and goes right up like that. So it's a straight line, it's always a velocity of 12 because the slope is always 12. So a bit of a trick question, what's the velocity after two seconds? Well, there is no t, so it's 12. What's the velocity after four seconds? Well, there's no t that affects it, so it's 12. Boom. Easy peasy, right? Mm -hmm. Lemon squeezy, isn't that what you're supposed to say after that? Yeah, like that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, is that? That's still, that still apply in today's world? Yep. Yep. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, which one do you want to do now? We want to do the symbols. The meters per Okay, yeah. Uh, velocities. Oh, yeah, you're right. The, the units. Right. That's okay. I lost a half a mark each on my own question there. That's okay. It's okay. Nobody's perfect. You just got to get real close. Okay. So let's do, I don't know. Let's do C. It's got some cubes in there. That, that, that's going to make it real tough, right? Oh. Look at that, a little bit of typo there. That should be a T. I guess that mark was there for a reason. So S prime is the velocity of, with respect to time function. Um, so I'm just going to write velocity here, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find the derivative of what's given. So this is going to be 3T squared, right? T cubed is 3T squared. Minus 2 times 6 is 12T. OK, now, do we have to factor this and make it all neat? Do we have to factor this? Should we factor it? Don't need to. Nope. Don't need to. Because we're just plugging the, value, the variable in anyway. So you can factor this if you want. Take a 3t out. That's the greatest common factor, but you do not have to. So when you're finding actual values for velocities, acceleration, things like that, you do not have to simplify. You just take the derivative or take the second derivative. Do not simplify. Just plug the values in. Now, if you want to simplify because you don't want to do so many calculations, then fine. But you do not have to simplify our factor here because we're not eliminating any factors. It's, it's really not helping us. It's just an extra step. So you would just put 2 in here and it would look like this. So that's going to be 3 times 4 is 12. Minus 24 is negative 12. Meters per second. Meters per second. That's right. Velocity. And then V of 4 is going to be what? Uh, 3 times 16, what's that? 30, 48. Minus 48. Ooh, is that going to be zero meters per second? All right. So the velocity after four seconds is zero meters per second. Okay. 
No problem, that's that's allowed. So here are our answers for B, uh, C. Okay. Now um, I'll leave I'll leave B and D for you if you want if you're assigned those or whatever. But um, this one co uh, quotient rule, right? You have to do quotient rule. And again, do not have you don't have to simplify. So don't stress out. Just do one kind of one level of uh, you know differentiation. Just differentiate. Do not simplify. Plug your values in. Done. Okay. So does that does that make sense for number two? Number two, good. Yes. Any questions? Okay. All right. What is the next one I have here? Did I see the Northern Lights yesterday? Yes. Yep. Yeah, they were amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I just just from my backyard, mind you. So there was a little bit of like there was lights in the city, I but I, I did saw see them. As they were fading, but my mom, my mom got pictures. But they were yeah, they're supposed to be good this weekend too. Okay, number four. Numero foro. If a ball is thrown directly upward with an initial velocity of 24.5 meters per second, then its height after t seconds in meters is given by this equation. Now you don't have to come up with the equation. And remember, this is a ball thrown straight up in the air. So it's like, uh, it's like a ball like this. It's not necessarily thrown sideways like the graph would indicate. It's thrown straight up and down, okay? That was easy. And so the graph though, the graph is not gonna look like this, is it? Oh, it's going straight up and then straight back down again. No, no. The graph will be graphed over time. So there'll be some kind of graph like this, and then it'll go like this. And so don't get caught thinking, oh, this, this means that someone is throwing the ball, you know, this distance away from, no, no, this is time. And so there is no real sideways direction here. This is just a ball thrown up in the air. It could be thrown sideways, or it could be thrown straight up. The graph is the same, okay? We're just doing height over time. So as time moves this way, the height goes up, and then the height comes back down, whether the ball is thrown sideways or whatever. So the function will dictate the maximum height if the ball is thrown straight up in the air versus the, the ball is thrown sideways. Um, you'll lose a little bit of vertical you know, force if you throw the ball sideways, so it won't go quite as high. But um, the, grab, the force of gravity will act uh, the same all the way through. So this is the function we're going to deal with anyway. So, this yeah. is an I don't know. I don't know if I've assigned you this. I don't know. It's a good question to do. So, you, I'll, I'll maybe put it in. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. So, uh, H. Okay. So find the velocity after one, two, three, and four seconds. Again, we find the derivative, right? So the velocity with respect to time comes from the derivative, which we'll find here. That's going to be twenty-four point five minus nine point eight t. Are you with me there? Just find the derivative of this expression. So velocity of one. 24.5 minus 9.8. Uh, what's that? 14.7 meters per second. Somebody double check my mental math there. Make sure I'm mentaling properly. Okay. Okay, so there's your velocities once you calculate those out. Notice that the first two are positive. The second two are negative. So we've got a, I don't know what the, graph actually looks like. I guess it, the uh, x-intercept, the height, starts at zero. So we do have kind of looking like this, right? Now, the, so the velocity after one second, pretty steep. Pretty steep there. Velocity after two seconds, not quite as steep. But still positive. The velocity after three seconds is, is just the negative of this one, this last one. And then the velocity after four seconds is the negative of the first one. Okay, so there is some symmetry about that, and we can tell where the maximum point is at what second, too, right? Looks like it's right between 2 and 3, 2.5, because of the symmetry. And you don't know what the heights are, but you know what the instantaneous speeds are. So if they're the same instantaneous speeds, right, if they're like this, the tangents are exactly opposite each other, then that appears to be, that'll be where um, they have the same height as well, and there's your axis of symmetry there, I guess. Okay, when does the ball reach its maximum height? Oh, okay, I guess that's what we're trying to find. Now, it, let's, let's, say, let's say we're guessing 2.5 because of what we've seen. The, the way you're gonna wanna do this, okay, coming up in the future, when the uh, projectile or the ball or whatever it is reaches its maximum height, what, how can you, um, what's the velocity of the ball when it reaches its maximum height? 
zero. Very good. So what we're going to want to do, the easiest thing to do, because you don't want to have to envision the graph all the time, and you're not going to be given this information where you have exactly, you know, 4.9 and negative 4.9. You're not going to be given that. So what we want to do is we want to take the velocity function and let it equal zero. And then we'll solve for the time that makes the velocity zero. This is going to be very important moving forward. You're going to have to do this a lot. So again, 9.8 t equals 24.5 divided by 9.8, okay, and so what is that? t equals, 2 .5. is it 2.5, yeah? Confirmed? Yep. Okay, so that's seconds. So 2.5 seconds, uh, that fits with what uh, we kind of guessed before, but this is how you do it. You let the derivative equal zero, and that's where you will get a zero slope tangent line, which represents this maximum point, okay? Now, what is the maximum height? Okay, so this is, this is where we have to just integrate pre-calculus stuff with calculus stuff and just use your minds and use your brains in figuring this out. So what is the maximum height? The maximum height is the h value when you put a t value into the original equation, okay? So we do not want the velocity after 2.5 seconds. We know it's zero. We want the actual height. So I'm going to put 2.5 in here. It's really, it's the height at 2.5 seconds. 24.5. Hey, yeah. I'm, you have a, I'm you have a nose just, oh, Okay, okay. I was wondering if you had a nose bleeder. Okay. Okay, yeah. Um, 2.5 squared. Uh, so, yeah, we put 2.5 in there. Uh, and then that, that height will be its maximum height because that is the... Uh, like the vertex of the parabola, okay? And so uh, do that calculation and you should get, or see, 30.625 meters or thereabouts, okay? Let me get that on your calculator. Any questions about 4C? Okay, when does it hit the ground? Well, uh, when does it hit the ground? You think, oh, when the velocity, the, it hits the ground, that's the velocity is gonna be zero then. Well, not according to this equation, because what you have to remember is this function is a, is a parabola now, and so it, it doesn't know where the ground is. The math doesn't know what the situation of the question is. And so if you try and find a, a velocity of zero, you're only going to get this maximum point. So it's not like, well, when it hits the ground, it stops moving, so let's find the velocity of zero on the ground. You can't think that way. Okay, you, as a matter of fact, you don't know really what the yeah. velocity is here, so it's, it's not really much to do with that at all. Um, it hits the ground when what? Height is zero. Thank you. When the height above the ground is zero, that's when it hits the ground. So, again, we're not really working with the derivative here. We are now working with the height above the ground when this is zero. So, what is the height with respect to t? Okay, that height is zero, and so I want to solve uh, for this equation here when it's zero. So again, some of this is derivative stuff, some of this calculus stuff, some of this is not. So here's where we, um, you have a couple options. You guys know about the quadratic formula. You could plug quadratic formula uh, A, B, and C in here, or you could factor. Looks like we might be able to factor this, right? We can take a T out. Can we take a 4.9 out? What's 24.5 divided by 4.9? Okay, sorry. Uh, 4.9 t, we can take that out. And he said 5, right? So this is going to be 5 minus t. Okay. So we, in this case, we have two factors, and that product of these two factors will be 0 when one or both of them uh, are 0. So when this one is zero, that is at t equals zero. That's what makes this zero, right? And this one, five minus t, where is that zero? At t equals five. So it's, it's zero here, we know that, because there's no constant, okay? That's our, our y-intercept. And it's also zero here at five, which totally makes sense. You could have actually gone from knowing that this uh, y-intercept is zero, you know that the vertex is at 2.5, so guess what? You know that the other intercept is the equal distance away from, from the axis of symmetry, so you could have viewed it that way too. 
that if this is a zero intercept, this is 2.5, this one has to be 5. Yes? How did we get from 5 minus t? I factored this. So how did we get the 5 minus t? I factored this. I took a 4.9t out of this as a common factor. Okay, good. Any other questions? Finally then, E, what is the velocity? Or with what velocity does it hit the ground? So now we have the time where it hits the ground. And so let's calculate this instantaneous velocity as it hits the ground. So we're going to use our, our derivative. And we're going to plug 5 seconds in there. So what is the velocity? Whoops. And we'll use actual 5 here. So that's going to be 24.5 minus 9.8t. And that t is going to be 5. Right? So velocity is, um, yeah, OK. So velocity at 5 seconds is going to be negative 24.5. Is that, is that what you guys got? Okay. Now, the other, the other way you could think about this, right? The ball is thrown upward with a velocity of positive 24.5 meters per second. So in these symmetries, right, the slope of the tangent, remember this tangent and this tangent at the same height are just opposite. So this tangent and this tangent in the same horizontal uh, line should be equal and opposite. Mm -hmm. So if you, th if you throw something out of the air with a certain speed, what's going to happen is gravity is going to act on it to slow it down and to bring it to a stop. And then boom, when it comes to a stop, gravity is also going to act on that as it comes down. And so neglecting air resistance and wind and aerodynamics and things like that, little things like that, the speed at which it leaves your hand should be the exact same speed as it, with it when it comes back to your hand if you catch it. Right? Because the same amount of time it takes to, to, for gravity to stop it at, up at its peak at, to zero is the same amount of time it's going to be acting on it to push it back down again, and so it'll come back to the exact same velocity. Okay? Again, um, not considering any air resistance aerodynamics, that kind of thing. Okay. All right, so let me know. Uh, do you have a, any questions about this question? Or does all of that kind of make sense? Because this is a very, this is a very all-encompassing question. This is perfect for these sections here. That's all, that, that's a, it's got a little bit of everything in it there. Good? Good. Yeah, good. I'm looking around the room. Everybody is nodding or sleeping, or I mean not sleeping, but everyone's nodding. All right, <laughs> nodding off? No, nodding, not nodding off. Okay. All right. okay. So next, after the test, do we continue unit three or is nope. it unit four? Nope. No, we're just doing three one and three two uh, from this chapter. Then we're going on to four. We're going to come back to unit three later.